So have you uh, reaffirmed with Greg Brower that he is going to endorse you? Or, uh, did you expect him to? You heard what he said. Yeah, I heard what he said. And, and I, we, we talked a little bit before the vote, so we'll, uh, we'll talk again very shortly. And, and uh, I, mean, I respect Greg and, and Warren, and so... You know, if you're looking for certainty, this isn't the risk. Um, so, uh, I heard what everybody said, and um, we've got, uh, we needed this affirmation from the party to continue, and we've got it, so we'll continue. Uh, it shifts from, you know, uh, Central Committee context to, to, you know, general election context. What do, you, what do you say to people who, uh, I think some of the people on the other camp said this was a foregone conclusion, it was an inside job because you were the chairman, you knew all these people who could set the whole deal up. And, and, and you know what, I, I will tell them this, that I don't think that vote reflects that. I can tell you I haven't spent a year in this organization. Um, you don't take those people for granted for anything. We've worked very hard for the last couple months to identify people, reach out to them personally, through the other mediums, uh, worked absolutely uh, scared to death the whole time. Because the other side of that coin is if you come to this venue and you get beat, that's a pretty serious message too. So, and, and, and to be honest with you, I mean, you heard what I said. If you don't come out of here with, with, with this organization's support, then, then you're, done, you're done if you're me. None of the other people had that responsibility, but I felt that I did. Why do you feel like you're moving on to the general election dynamic? I mean, Well, because now you're talking to voters at large as opposed to a central committee. Check, even check, if you have other Republican check, check. opponents, if the court decides. So obviously, I'll still be talking to this group, but it's now you have to start projecting that message throughout check, the seven hundred ninety-nine precincts. Okay. 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 Maybe I'll be through the day. Will you answer your phone in 72 hours? Depends on if your caller ID comes up. On. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything to say to uh, Commander Lippold who says he's going to continue running despite the losing the... You know what? That's his choice. Uh, and I'm sure he's thought about it. He thinks that's what he needs to do and all this stuff. <coughs> How's everybody else's Saturday going? I'm so glad to be here with you today. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. <laughs> if you had told us it was a done deal, we could have taken the deal well, the day off, right? I didn't know. It didn't feel like a done deal to me. So. <laughs> why, do Democrats, why do Democrats have a chance, given uh, the history of the district and, and the president's unpopularity? Well, I, I think if you look at the district and you study the, the voting results, um, 72 months ago, Jill Derby beat Dean Peller by 4,000 votes in Washington County. If that's not a wake-up call, the, the, the elections have, have resulted in Republicans, but I can assure you my view of the world is um, you got to go out and earn it uh, in, in every corner and in every county because uh, Dean Heller is an excellent candidate. And you look at the average of those three elections, and, and I understand it's never been Democratic, but if, if you start out with that thought, then I think that's a mistake. Who says that 72 months ago? Why don't you just say six years? You don't have to do the math. Well, because I'm trying to get you more columns. <laughs> <laughs> six years. Thank you. I'll work on that, Dan. <laughs>